Isn't that right? Yes. So we're a little bit snookered, aren't we? Yes. And we're both pinning our hand on our chin, aren't we? <laughs> so what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Are we going to hit it harder with a hammer? Or are we yeah! going to... Okay, welcome back to the timber frame project it's been a few weeks since I last did anything just things have got a bit crazy lately um, it's not a pretty sight the gazebo has now just fallen to pieces I think we're full of water as well I think we're just about clear. I'm now uh, more exposed, so the timber is going to be, not that it was all covered before, but it's going to be more susceptible to drying out or getting wet. So I really need to wrap this project up in the next couple of days, I think, and get it up in position. So once it's in position and it's all pegged in, then the whole thing can tweak and move and do what it does. But while it's sat in individual components, there's a chance that it's not going to fit back together again. This joint over here, this is the back beam which will be against the wall, stone wall. So we're looking down onto the roof here. That side is fine. This side needs to go down a little bit. These are kind of half lap joints. Um, so we need to just plane a little bit off there. I use the strap over here to pull everything in tight. So I just need to get my tape out and just make sure our distances are okay. And then that's uh, ready to drop down on there as well. Alright, so I'm still fiddling around with this piece. And I think what's happened over the past few weeks with all the heat and rain and all sorts is that there's a little bit of a twist. I mean, this is a four meter beam, this one. And while this section here looks like it'll slot in nice, if you look down the end, you probably can't tell, but it's just twisted down on the right, which means we've got enough space on this side, but uh, it's still too tight on this side for it to slot down. Oh, this rebate plane makes a world of difference, especially now it's sharp. You can see the difference is that the blade, the, the planer knife goes right to the edge, unlike a normal plane, like that number four I started off with, so you can get right up against the sides. I mean, if it was softwood, one blow with that hammer, I reckon it would go, but it's just no fighting oak. But I'll try.
As you saw my Thor hammer, the Persuader, uh, that split that we had right at the beginning didn't last very long and she's gone. So resorted to this sledgehammer, it's fine because it's the top, no one's going to see that slight um, dent. But we're okay now, we're pretty much flat on top. The top doesn't matter, it's down the bottom which does and we're about two or three mil off. So I'm gonna just give it a plain one, it comes apart, but I'm happy. This end's even better, it can go down a little bit more, but the only reason why it isn't going down is because it's sat on another timber. It means the whole roof structure on the four posts is fine. For now, I'm gonna mark up where we want our posts to be, and then we'll mortise it when we flip this one around. But whilst we've got the roof up this way, I need to get this corner triangle in, or, or angled piece. And it's pretty straight. Now originally the plan was to have all three beams intersecting on top of the post, but I think that's just a bit busy and beyond my uh, capabilities so what I've done is just set that angled beam back a little bit from the post and it will just be a brace more than a beam it doesn't need to be this size at all now I'm second guessing myself and by the time I put this video out any advice from you guys will be too late so I was going to just put a big tenon on the end of this just like I have on the wind braces if you imagine this but with a much much thicker tenon but looking at how hard it's been to get these big beams in i'm now worried that when we come to assemble it getting an angled tenon in like this is actually going to be really quite difficult with this size timber it was hard enough with the wind braces uh, so i could do a half lap that's only goes kind of three quarters of the way across i mean floor beams like big joists are put in but I think they're put in like dovetails like pocketed in I might go grab a book let's go grab a book <sighs> while we're on the subject of books these are the only two I've come across and they seem to be telling me most of what I need to know this is one I've had for a few years hello Marx um, and it's by Rupert Newman quite local to here actually it's quite helpful because it's more about oak framing, English or British type techniques um, and the scribe rule and that sort of stuff rather than the softwood square rule which I've come across in others which is more about this book here which is more American I think. Still really good stuff in here and more how to than this one. This one's more of the background and an overview because I guess he's an oak framer and will tell you how to do it whereas this one is more of a technique based book. Um, anyway, so let's have a look, see what there is in here about floor joists because that's basically what we're putting in. I'm gonna to link to both of these below and actually Rupert Newman's one is uh, been revised now. I don't know what else is in it, maybe more information on eater sips and things like that I think I read. Uh, so I'm going to update this one and maybe I'll give away this book in the future. The smallest cat in the world. You wouldn't think she's eight. She looks like a kitten. Hmm? I'm covered in sawdust now. Confusing thing when you're DIY and you're teaching yourself and you're using a lot of books and YouTube videos and things from across the world. You get all your terminology is wrong you know if you were to use them to a tradesman here they look at you and and just you know laugh joist pocket maybe that's what it is okay I'm marked out I'm gonna go for the tenon rather than the half lap and then we can all peg it in what I do want to do though is make it slightly wider than the others and also 
put a kind of house section. They call this a tusk tenon. I'm not going to do that angle bit at the top, but below that tenon there's just an extra bit which gives it a bit more support and a bit more load bearing, I guess. Well, that's the first beam taken back off, so I flipped it 90. Now we're going to cut the mortise into there. All right, so that's the main bulk. I need to go that way a smidge just to take a little bit more off, and then we need to cut an angled section to account for this part. So we're cutting the hole that this bit goes into. Yeah. So we've cut this hole, that this long bit goes into, but we need to cut a stubby little hole just for this little extra bit. All right, so that's what that line's for. So if we find that line, then we need to measure how deep that one is, because it's not as deep, is it? No. So, Clear all that out. Okay. So I've got you've got bigger hands and I've got smaller hands. That's right. So I can get bigger bits out. Clear it right onto the floor. Okay. Right, we'll flip it upside down and shake it a bit in a minute. So do you think this is gonna fit in here? Let me see. No. Yeah? Yeah, go. Okay. Okay, those, both of those pockets are done. Just done this one over here. So I kind of cut the angle in and it's only tidying up. Right before I wrap it up for the day, it's time for a bit of a test fit. 
Uh, it could be pretty loose, could be pretty tight, no idea really. So I've managed to start getting one ended and now I'm thinking how on earth are we going to do this in practice when it comes to raising the frame. This needs to head in that way and at the same time that end needs to be shoved in. This needs to get that into that hole so... Oh no, I don't think this is going to work because one one end is going into the top of the half lap, the other one's going to the bottom of the half lap beam. So even if it was possible to get it built, this kind of plane of the building, we're not going to be able to crane it in as one. They need to go up member by member really. And the post will already be in situ, and the first two cross beams. So I should have done it as a half lap as well, and then we could have just sat it down. Daddy. Isn't that right? Yes. So we're a little bit snookered, aren't we? Yes. And we're both pinning our hand on our chin, aren't we? <laughs> so what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to hit it harder with a hammer, or are we yes! going to. Yes! Okay. I don't think that's always the answer. No, 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 no. Do you know what? It might just be all right. So this end is slowly going in and it will, it's easily got enough clearance there that it will go in. It's just kicking the other end in enough. What I need to be mindful of is this beam at the back will have two posts and it'll be put up as a frame, as will this one here. So they'll be in place so there won't be too much wiggle room. This half lap can just slot down on top. I think it makes sense to get this end in first, which means the only bit of jiggery poker we have to do is probably just tweak this frame a little bit out, which isn't hard to do. And then bearing in mind that we've got a little bit of give in the half lap the other end, probably, he says, tweak this one out a little bit, even if it springs back. And then by the time we hammer that the other right way, I think all I need to do is just take the edge, take the corner off this tenon, and then it'll guide itself in. It'll straighten out once it's in, and then by the time it's pegged twice, it'll draw it in. We should be able to get away with it. So therefore, not masses of progress today. It does mean that we are pretty much done on the roof structure if I can jam this one in and get it drilled. Then I can just cut the notches for the rafters. We've got some chunky oak rafters that I'm probably going to cut and t to size when I get there. But I just want to notch the beams so that they'll sit in, which will hold them straight. I don't think I need to half lap them as such. I'll just kind of just literally cut a groove in each of the two uh, beams that they sit on, or three actually. So it's best to do that whilst everything's set up. Other than that, I think we can take this apart, make sure it's all numbered up. Then I can work on the second uh, frame which is and with all the wind bracing. And then it's just going to be a whole load of sanding before we pack it in the van and head off. But that seems a long way away. Any tips and advice where I've gone horribly wrong, stick it below. Apart from that, thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. We'll see you next time.